Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Addicted Life. Today we got our kayaks oh. and I got a friend and we're in the woods. Finally I'm not alone. I was gonna say it took a while to convince me to come mushroom picking because I don't do as much yep. at all. No idea but and dead I giveaway. The master. Yep. <laughs> I've seen a lot of YouTube videos. Sensei, grasshopper. <laughs> That's what we're doing everybody. We're out here picking mushrooms and what are these? First rides in the kayak for me. Yes, sir. Are you excited? I'm excited. Yours is pretty nice. I've been rocking Cam's kayak for a couple of weeks now and I absolutely love them. So the goal is today is hit the woods and then hit the lake and have fun doing it. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Let's go on an adventure. So obviously we have been bringing you guys a ton of these mushroom videos lately and I want to see some comments drop below on what you guys think of them. We've been getting a great response from the audience because you guys have been watching these videos and they've been getting a ton of views. Mushroom picking and foraging is something that is seasonal in the northwest and in most of the places in the world but it's such a great thing to get into and it's such a pleasure to do especially when you finally have friends like I do today. Unfortunately we just got our first big freeze of the year this morning. We've had unseasonably warm weather for the last couple of weeks but we finally got this big freeze. We had a clear night last night and it got down to below freezing temperatures and that's what actually kills these mushrooms especially when we get all this rain like we have the mushrooms get wet they get soggy and then they freeze and then they just start to decay and go to crap which then again they're not good to eat so if you guys like these videos let's see some comments below because we're going to keep doing it by the year every year we'll come out and do this stuff and i want to see some responses on what you guys think of this stuff and if you even like these recipes so i know i enjoy it and i hope you guys are all right I don't do this much, so I just think I'm looking for a white mushroom, but I don't really do this too much, so I don't even know if I'm even looking in the right area. But, oh, well, I got little mushrooms here, but something tells me these ones are not the right ones. I'm gonna just kinda say a no on that guy. Definitely not gonna taste it and find out. Status update, tons of fungi. This is a very fungi kind of a place. That's why we're here, because we're fun guys. But I haven't seen any edible mushrooms yet. Some of these might be edible. Again, I think I, I referenced to a lot of this in one of our last videos, and I'll do it again. If a lot of you out there know what kind of mushrooms you're seeing in this B-roll, be sure to comment below and, and let us know. So I don't have my mushroom book with me. I know the ones that I want to pick and eat, but there's a lot out here that are edible that I don't even know, and I don't even know the names of them, so that's why I leave them alone. And that's something I definitely want to emphasize on in these videos, and I've emphasized on before, is be sure you have the right mushrooms before you eat them. Don't take my word for it. Go to, the, go to a restaurant, go to the grocery store, go to any produce section and ask people that might know more than you what that mushroom is or do a lot of research before you eat them. Because a lot of these mushrooms won't necessarily kill you, but you can get very, very sick. It causes a lot of stomach illness. It causes a lot of throwing up. And uh, needless to say, you really don't want to do it. Stuff will be coming out of both ends and that's not fun. So we're going to keep looking here. Cam's over here somewhere. I hear him whistling for us. I snuck up over that little ridge right there down this trail. Found my second mushroom. It's only a two pointer though. Definitely not one for harvest today, but you know, probably gonna let that one, let those ones walk. I feel like there has been people here already. Well, as the wise old mushroom picker once said, if they ain't there, they ain't. So let's get out of here, let's change spots. One thing that'll make you a lot better mushroom picker over time is by moving quickly and covering a lot of ground. Don't get stuck on one area just because it looks good. I'm guessing that this area probably has already been picked over. So we're gonna hop in the truck, relocate, find some mushrooms. Here we go, different spot, same idea. Let's see if there's some mushrooms here. Goodness, this looks good. We're in a new spot with Jordan, but I still haven't found one. I'm terrible at this and I don't even know what I'm looking for, really. At least we're having fun, right? Yeah. We're fun guys. Saw some elk tracks. Fun. I saw those jawbones back there. Ooh. Maybe it was Bigfoot. Something Blair Witch style. Ooh. Stop it. You're scaring me, Cam. That's a chanterelle. I just found one. It looks a little. Oh yeah. Yeah, I found, oh, I yeah. found it, I found it. Dibs, dibs. All day, dibs. no matter what. Oh, there's I, more. Oh, the little, yeah. get out of there. Oh, the little's gonna smash him. Yee! So Way that's to what, go, Cam. 
So that's a little older, right? Yeah, they look pretty wet, but it doesn't look like they froze too hard. They're kind of under these trees here. All right, way to go, Cam. Dinner. Dinner. All right. Now, it's really up. important, guys and gals, that you don't just pluck these things out of the ground. They'll actually keep growing back year after year, and you can remember those spots if you don't just pluck them out of the earth. So make sure to take your knife and cut these things. Too often I see people with pictures of piles of mushrooms and they're all have the stems on it with big chunks of dirt. And that is not the correct way to harvest these things. So, oh, wow. A little wet, but it's okay. It feels a little bit frozen, but we're gonna eat these things really quickly. We're gonna be catching some fish here in just a minute and cooking these bad boys up. All right. What's in the bag? Mission one complete. You got some more to pick over there. Ow, okay. Fighting back. Fighting back? He's it's running, fighting he's back. <laughs> nice. That's dirty. Be sure to clean these things out before you put them in your bag. And I like to use either a paper bag or a bucket. You guys have seen me packing a bucket around over the last couple of weeks. And that's really because one, a paper bag gets wet when it's raining, or a plastic bag, like a, you know, just a grocery bag, will rip open when you're walking through the brush. And of course, you'll be losing mushrooms and not even knowing it. Let's keep looking here. I know there's gotta be some more. Oh, here's one. Nice, little peekaboo. Trying to hide from us, Arya, I see. More. Oh, look at this one! Delicate little flower. You almost stepped on that one. Oh. It's not, dude, it almost bit you. It snuck up on you. It neeked up on me. How oh, beautiful, man. Oh, that smells so good. We are gonna be living the high life. Little's digging for one. Do you find one? <laughs> He's digging for something. Well, Jordan, Jordan's in his Jordan's in his happy place for sure. He found some mushrooms, so now I think it's probably going to be time to go fishing because we spent a lot of time kind of trying to hunt these things down. You can see those boys working there. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Let's go get in the kayaks. Yeah, is that enough for dinner? That is. We got a pretty good little haul here. Yes. We got enough. Six, seven mushrooms here. Oh, 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 there you oh, go. Dodge, dodge. Got about six or seven mushrooms. Plenty for our recipe tonight. Mmm. Let's go pair them. Sweet. Eh? Now it's time to go flick some bugs and catch some fish. Go time, everybody. The kayaks are launched. Cameron's first introduction to his craft is going well. He's out there doing a little dance, doing the fish dance, ripping around with his Minn Kota. We are loaded for crappie. Now, crappie is the goal here. This lake is a very famous lake for catching these things this time of year, and it's a lot of fun. Last time we filmed here, you guys may remember, we did a little challenge, and I whooped everybody's butt with the fly rod. Marlon said, no way, no way you're gonna beat me. I got trout magnets. I'm gonna catch more fish than you. And I said, well, look, I got my little wooly bugger, my brown lady bugger, and I kicked his butt. So we're gonna do a little rematch. Cam's gonna fly fish too. We got our addicted pan fish bobbers. We got everything we need. Let's hit the water. Let's catch some fish. Fly paddle. Oh, what do you say, sir? What a fine day for a stroll. <laughs> this is cool. Or a troll, if you will. What do you think so far, man? Pretty stable. You look say. good. Rule number one is complete. So this again, guys, is Cam's first time in these kayaks. And I have been extremely impressed. If you guys have watched any of these kayak videos so far with these old towns, I, they are a fishing machine. It, it's an entirely different level of kayak fishing, one that we've never experienced before, but it really is elevating our fishing experience out here on lakes, ponds, even rivers. We haven't done any river stuff yet, but that's still coming. But the way that you can cover water, effectively fish, stand and, and cast and cover and, and fish every little bit of structure or whatever the lake is offering you is just, unparalleled you can't find any other kayak that can do the things that this is really it's just like a little mini bass boat so it'll be cool today to see how it works for catching fish like this these little crappie and stuff first impression too i can't believe like i've already got things and ideas in my head on like you know spots you can get into that you're not going to get into with the traditional boats you know that don't have ramps like 
your access and how you're going to fish those areas. Like I've got, we've got some ideas that, yeah, can't wait to try. And the funniest thing of all is we put our camera guy in a normal kayak and <laughs> he's going to be a while. I don't know if you guys can see him back there because he's so far back, but I kind of feel bad. Sorry, Alex. It's cold out here, but I got to get rigged. We're going to throw, I'm going to start off with this little addicted trout bobber. And I'm going to put a little swivel on it and start with a little fly underneath it, a little jig, uh, just to try to get something, just to try to get something going here. I've got it strung up my main line. It's real stable. I'm going to reach around, grab my gear and see what's up. So I got my little waterproof box just because I don't know if I'm going to go swimming today or not. I've got my little selection of I'll throw some little flies and jigs just to try to get them. If that don't work, we're gonna go with some bait. But for now, I'm gonna pick one of those. All right, so a little sneak peek at my bag here. A little teaser for you guys. What is this? What is this? A little addicted backpack by Mustad. I'm not gonna say too much, but be looking out for these things pretty soon here. Nevertheless, sidetracked. Right, we're gonna get set up here with the fly rod. Cameron's gonna go with his boat rod. He's got a little addicted pan fish bobber and uh, either some micro worms or some trout magnets or whatever these little guys might be into. We don't quite know yet. But like I said last time, I kicked everyone's butt with the little green leggy bugger. So that's what I'm going back with. And I actually have it right here on my hat. Go ahead and take that look up. There it is. The old uh, crappie killer. Let's put it on. Oh, I got one. Fish on. Oh, it's a baby. First crappie of the day. Ooh, ooh, ooh. First crappie of the day. He's a cute one, but he's got to be bigger than that. Got a little jig, a little piece of bait on there. Split shot, my addictive trout bobber. Try to get a bigger one. Come on. Come on. Moving my bobber just a little bit just to try to entice him. There he is. Got him. Oh, he popped off. Dang it. Just moving that bobber a little bit just to entice him. But right back in that spot. I didn't hook him, but swinging a miss, big whiff. I'm giving another shot here. Come on. Got him. Got him, everybody. It's a good one. It's a good one, finally. Finally, I was just being patient. I finally moved over to the side of the lake where I was seeing some fish caught. And what do you know? There's fish. Well, that's a good one. Stay on there. Stay little. So these things have to be about 10 inches to actually keep. This one definitely looks like a keeper. I'm gonna cruise over to Cameron and get my tape measure. Oh, what a beautiful little crappie here. This one is eagle. Look at the colors on this thing. So I haven't stood in these things much, but that fish is pissing me off. So I'm gonna get full, like ready. Oh, he's already on it again. Look, he was on it. Oh, oh. Mm, full standing position. Full standing position. Oh, it's a yellow perch. <laughs> but at least I know I'm in the game. Just the ability to stand in this thing and have it be nice and stable and take a hook set and swing at them is pretty freaking badass, honestly, guys. Caught a few perch, a few small crappie, one that was almost a keeper, and then I've lost a bunch. Back to the bag of tricks. You got a little bigger one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Frick. <laughs> well, that worked out pretty good. Freaking. <laughs> got crappie. There was a school of crappie by the boat. So I put the camera down there on the bobber for you guys. That's definitely a keeper. Good sized ones. And uh, figured, what if there was one more in there that wanted to play? 
So hopefully that was a cool, hopefully that was a cool bobber down. You get played with, oh, gotta do better than that. Come on. Twitch, 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 twitch. Getting away from you. Guy. Right. I was gonna walk around the neighborhood and pull oh, Bobber, the Bobber. Put the dollar on it. Oh, I got him. Did you see him jump? Did you see him jump? He jumped like this high out of the water. Oh, there he is, got him. I'm on him, boys, I'm on him. Oh, that's actually a perch. A little mini perch. Another species in this lake, obviously. It's a little too small to eat, though. He's a little fish stick. I'm gonna let him go. Really cool little fish, though. Oh, later, bud. Got him. There he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. It's another really good one. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Is this a keeper? Oh, stay on there, buddy. Stay on there. Sweet. Another great one here. So one thing I noticed here, and it's just a great tip for any angler of any style of fishing is pay attention to what's going on around you. Before, when I was working my way down here, I was staying, I was letting my stuff sink way too deep into the water column, I noticed. I looked at everybody else's bobbers down here that were catching fish. They're using a different method but everybody's leaders were super short and they were putting a lot of movement on their bobber and ultimately catching way more fish than I was. So I've been letting my fly sink a lot less and I've been moving it a lot more and instant success. It's working. What a beauty. Great little crappie. These are the coolest little fish. Got it. Got him. Oh, that was great too. That was the best take I've had so far. I was watching this little nick in my line here. It's the only way I can tell I'm getting bites. I don't have any sort of indicator on here. But I was watching my line and that fly line just slowly started to pay out across the water. I laid into him. Didn't go 20. That's another good one there. That's another good one. Doubles, buddy. Double. Freaking doubles. Oh, Mine's smaller though. Gonna have to do y'all the measure on that one. That's the big no, the big crop. It's like the mongoid. Oh wow. I'm gonna lose it though. Oh I got him! I got him! I got him! Dinner plate, baby. What a trophy. That's a trophy. That'll He's go gonna there. how are you preparing these? I'm thinking. I don't wanna spoil the surprise. I don't know, but we'll turn the camera off and tell me. Got the motor at 100% power and just using the foot pedals and the rudder on this thing to steer, keep real clean control. These things are pretty amazing, man. Good quick way to get back to the boat ramp because it's cold. Look at little over there. He looks like he's just made for this thing. Well, what do you know? We're back in Kanigi's Outdoor Kitchen once again. And on today's menu, it's a very special thing. Something I came up with on the way up here, actually. And it's the Addicted Crapito. So what we're basically gonna do is make a crispito, like a rolled up crispito. I'm gonna fry the mushrooms, I'm gonna fry the fish, and I'm gonna put it into a flour tortilla, roll it up and fry it in the pan. So this should turn out really well. We got these beautiful fresh mushrooms. We're gonna get those going first, and then I'm gonna throw the crappie in after that, because it's gonna cook pretty darn quick. One important thing to remember when cooking these wild mushrooms, one is to wash them very, very well. You wanna get all the dirt and those pine needles off. It's not detrimental to eat some of those pine needles and dirt, but it's just a little extra fiber. But I like to get them off and make sure that there's no bugs or anything on top of those mushrooms. But the key to it is, the best way to cook these things, you're gonna slice them up in these smaller portions like this, and then you're gonna let them cook down in the pan before you start to actually add any seasoning or butter. I'm gonna throw a little bit of butter in here, one, right before the, the crappie goes in, but two, just to add a little flavor and some nice taste to those mushrooms. But again, the key is to cook a lot of that water out of those mushrooms before you add the seasoning or the butter because that water will evaporate with your seasonings and the butter all with it, and you won't really have that tasty of a mushroom afterwards. So, get these things in the pan, and then we wait. So you can start to see these mushrooms have been in here about two minutes now, and as they start to cook, you're starting to see all that liquid, all that water, start to cook out of those mushrooms and that's actually the mushroom itself cooking. 
it gets rid of all that moisture then it starts to basically cook just like a meat would like a some sort of protein so we're gonna make sure that we start to hear that sizzle that that water evaporates and then we're gonna throw in our butter all right so our mushrooms have rendered down we're about ready to put some butter in there Anyhow, <laughs> here goes the butter, everybody. And like mom always said, a half stick of butter will make anything taste good. So we're gonna get that in there. We're gonna just let those mushrooms start to cook with that butter, and then we're adding in our crappie. All right, that's looking good. And goes the crappie. So to complete the recipe, we're gonna just put a little bit of just old-fashioned taco seasoning in there. And once this fish starts to get pretty cooked and flake apart, I'm actually gonna bust it all up with a spoon. We're gonna kind of get it chopped up in almost like a nice little taco meat style. Have those mushrooms mix in with that meat. And then we're gonna get it into our tortilla and start frying. All right, it's really starting to tie the room together here, guys. One last little finishing touch before we put it in our tortillas. We can't live life without a little bit of tapatio. How nice all that stuff flakes up. Makes the perfect taco meat, or crappito meat, if you will. All right, let's get these things made. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of that meat. Make sure to get some of those mushrooms in each one. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of critics out here. What I'm gonna do, make sure to get this thing nice and tight. Roll it on up, set it aside. All right, look at that. Yummy. Those things rolled up. Perfect. Pan full of goodness there. <laughs> Oil's nice and hot. In goes the crappie dough. Uh oh, lots of shrooms. Right, they're looking done, guys. Wow, golden brown, that hard. What are you doing? What do you think of the crappito? Wow, those turned out pretty good. I must say so. And there you have it, everybody. The first ever crappito. Let's give her a try, Cam. Well, it looks good, but does it taste good? That is the question. It's got some great ingredients in it. Fresh picked, fresh caught, fresh meal. <laughs> Definitely hot. But honestly, absolutely delicious. These things are a little bony. I did my best to try to fillet these bones out, but there's definitely a little prickly in there. It's got a bit of a spice to it, if you will. But that tortilla got nice and fluffy. It's not too overcooked. You can see how nice and juicy that white meat is in there. Nice little flavor from that mushroom every couple bites. What a good meal. Mm. Absolutely phenomenal. Honestly, a little bit better than I thought. I'm not one who's cooked a lot of taquitos in my life. And so the crappie dough was definitely a little bit of a stretch but I definitely think I'll be doing this again with some other styles of fish. It really turned out. Check that out. Mmm. Ooh, look at that. Got a nice big piece of mushroom in there. That meat has a really nice, mild, white fish flavor. There's not a whole lot of fishiness to it. And then you get that really nice, wholesome kind of buttery flavor from those mushrooms. Really is kind of a great complement to that fish. Better give it a try at home, you guys. Well, I must say, what a great day this has been. Got to spend time with some good friends in some beautiful places. If you guys want to see more awesome catching hooks just like this one, be sure to go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down, hit subscribe. Please turn those bells on. It really helps get these videos out. Hit that thumbs up and comment below and you can be the comment of the day, just like this person right here. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. You stay fishy. We'll see you out there.